In this video, I'm going to show you my five favorite compensation planning tools when using a spreadsheet. This video will help you do two things fast. First, build out your compensation model in record time by using something in Excel called tables. Second, build out your compensation formulas so that others will be able to read your formulas. Let's jump in and get started here. When building a compensation model, your data will normally come from your payroll system. So we'll take your raw data, go to insert, and insert it into a table. This is the very first step, insert it into a table. Now we're gonna take that data and take the full name, which normally comes in one column. We're gonna use the text to columns feature and just split the first and the last name. So now you have your first name in a column and your last name in a column. This will allow us to write some formulas so that when we add new employees in the future, the formulas automatically populate using the tables feature here. So we're gonna put the last name first and then the first name last. So now, if you want, you can go in and sort by last name. Another thing you can do is to insert a unique ID. So we're just gonna use the left text function to grab the first three letters of the first and the last name to now create a unique identifier hit the enter button, and auto fills all of those IDs all the way down the table. And then, of course, the first and the last name. So now anybody reading this formula can look at it and go, oh, this formula was built upon the first and the last name. If we wanna add a new employee, simply go to the bottom right of the table, select the bottom right cell, hit the tab button, and a new row will automatically appear. Put in the employee's first and last name, Mark Cuban, and the formulas will auto-populate for you. If you wanna add multiple employees now, simply drag the table down, and now you can insert multiple employees. So let's put in here, let's do another Mark, Mark Brady. The formulas that are tied to the first and the last name will auto-populate for you. Another feature is to add in multiple tables and tie those tables together. So let's go ahead and build out another table. This table has a header, so let's uh, do salaries. Let's do a the position and the salary. Let's do a police officer. Uh, let's put in here $50,000, firefighter, and uh, 52,000 and an EMS. So now we have positions and salaries in its own unique table. This will be very important as we begin to build out these formulas. Let's apply these positions now randomly to all of our employees. Go ahead and drag and drop those there. Uh, before we go further, let's name these two tables. We're gonna go to the design tab, table name and we're gonna call this the employee data table. So we've selected that table. Now we're gonna select the bottom table down here. We're gonna name this table the salary schedule table. So now both tables are named, so when in our formula that we're just about to write here, we're actually gonna see the tables pulled up. So let's write an index match formula to pull in the salary by position. So now we can see that in the index formula, we're pulling in the salary out of the salary schedule table. We're gonna match it to the position, and we're going to match that position in the salary schedule table down below. So now our formula identifies where we're pulling everything from. We have an NA here. That just simply means that we need to sort filter this table A to Z. So once that's done, we're gonna turn this to a currency. So anytime that you're working in tables, the great thing is that it will automatically identify in your formula what's being pulled, what column headers are being pulled. So once we have that done and set up, let's build another table. This table, uh, we're going to do taxes, so let's do taxes and the city. Let's go ahead and insert a new table. My table has a header here. We're going to do the city and the tax rate. So the three cities we're gonna choose are Chicago, New York, and Dallas and we're gonna put in a tax rate for these three cities. 20% uh, here, 15%, and Dallas will put in 10%. And then we're gonna grab these three cities and we're just gonna randomly apply them. Uh, but first, let's go ahead and name the table here. Let's name this the tax rates. 
table. So tax rate table here. So the table is named. So let's go ahead and insert these cities randomly to these employees again. So now that they're randomly applied, we can go ahead and write a formula. So we're going to take their total salary. So there it is in the formula, salary times their index. Let's pull in the index. Let's pull in the tax rates. And then we're going to use a match portion of the formula to look up their city that they're in in this tax rate table down below. And so we now have the taxes associated with their salary. Very easy. Anybody else could read this formula now. It actually multiplies the salary by the city that they're from and the tax rate associated with that city. Now let's go ahead and build in a performance table. So we're going to have a performance rate and a bonus. So let's select the cells, insert here again, table. We're going to have headers for our table. And let's name this performance rating and the bonus amount. So we're going to put in three performance ratings. First, let's go into design again, name the table performance table. Now that that's set up, we're going to simply go down and put in three performance ratings. Let's put in highly effective, effective, and I guess you suck if you're not effective or highly effective. So let's go ahead and put in bonus amounts of $2,000, $1,000, and zero. Let's randomly apply these performance ratings to these employees once again. Let's go ahead and drag these down. This is just an illustration, so we're just randomly applying them. We're going to use the index match formula again. I prefer these over V lookups. Uh, just going to pull in the match now. What are we matching? The highly effective performance rating down to the performance rating in the table below. So it'll pull in the correct bonus amount. There you go. Format this as a dollar and we are set. Uh, another thing I like to do about right now is let's go ahead and get our table set up. So let's double click so everything fills correctly. Every You don't have text running over. And let's center our headers. Just doing a little bit of quick cleanup here. And let's go ahead and put in a total column. So anytime that you're doing something, what you want to be able to do is to show other people that your formulas are correct and you're pulling in the correct thing. So we're going to pull in salary, taxes, and bonus for their total cost here. So that's the power of using tables is that everyone can see what is associated, what's inside of your formula. There's the salary, the taxes, and the bonus. Uh, another thing I like to do in a table is to actually sum or put in. So there's a total row. When you click it, it'll insert in total certain columns up automatically for you. Another thing you can do is go in and put in a subtotal, and then you can identify what you're actually trying to subtotal. So here, years employed, we want to know the average years that our employees have worked for us. So when we do that, we're just going to select a year, all the years employed. So now we have an average. So the average employees worked for us a little over three and a half years there. Uh, another thing to do is when you insert a brand new employee, sometimes uh, when you're in messing with Excel, you've turned off the automatic feature of tables. If this happens and the formulas are not auto-populating, go up to File, go down to Options, and in your formulas, go to Automatic. That just simply auto-fills all those formulas for you automatically. Another thing I like to do is pivot tables, which go to Insert Pivot Tables. This is a great feature in Excel that very few people use. Um, it seems like people get confused with this one, but I like to use uh, pivot tables to dissect uh, data and to really look at your compensation data in different ways. This table I'm going to look at by performance rating so that I can sort filter where are all my highly effective, effective, and my you suck employees um, so that I can then identify which cities are doing the best. So, uh, of course, I can just select just the effective employees and see that all of my effective employees are just in New York. 
uh, effective and highly effective employees are in New York and Chicago. And last, if you want to see them all, just select the all. And now you can sort filter your data. If you'd like a copy of this spreadsheet, go to davidpgoss.com. Go to get a spreadsheet template and fill out the form below. And then we will email you this spreadsheet template. Thank you for watching.